Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. So I've flown all the way from England to be here tonight um, via Santa Rosa. So I'm going to tell you about a few of the things I've just been getting interested in recently and, and what I'm working on. The story kind of starts, strangely, in the 19th century with a guy called William Strata Smith. And he earned this devastatingly exciting nickname because he invented um, the stratified geological map. This is something that never happened before. People only knew uh, what minerals were about by what was on the surface. But he looked at the fossil record and found out that the same fossils occurred in the same types of rocks. And furthermore, that these rocks were always laid down in the same order. And so he was able to travel around and make a geological map of England pointing out what was underneath the surface. And this was incredibly important at the time, so much so that people stole his invention, didn't pay him, and he went to the, uh, the poorhouse and went to jail for many years because he couldn't pay his debts. But that's kind of a side story. But <clears throat> the point is that he looked under the dirt. He had a theory um, about where the value was in all the dirt and created the map, and a lot of people got very rich, not him. But our dirt is data. It's all around us, and there's an increasing amount of it. Now, right now, we're very good at looking at the surface. If a data thing is above the surface, we can find it out, right? The pub runs out of beer, they reorder. Uh, do they know, perhaps if they knew ahead of time they were likely to run out of beer, they could have a crystal ball and always you know, be stocked up and not run out of my favorite beer. So until now, we've not really been in a position where crystal balls are available to everybody. The crystal ball of computing has been in the hands of people with a lot of money, you know, retailers, um, banks, people who can afford to mine their loyalty card schemes to you know, market better to you, to run their operations more efficiently. So you see this as well. Obviously, every time you go on the web, you see results that are actually um, searches that are the results of massive amounts of, of computation and resources over a lot of data that go to make up what you see. This is dirt. This is our dirt, right? This is the data that's generated by your everyday activity. This, every time you go on the web, use your mobile phone, data streaming absolutely everywhere. We're generating massive, massive amount of, uh, amounts. Facebook generates more than the Library of Congress every day or something completely crazy like that. And the key thing is we've got this large amount of data, but there's two other things that are happening as well. Cheap they're cheap computers um, and open source software. This little guy is um, called Hadoop. He's a toy, pa toy uh, elephant. I'll explain later. But the point is it makes... They, it democratizes access to being able to uh, process all this dirt. The means of extraction mean that the big boys can now do even more than they could do before. These guys' businesses would not have been possible without this democratization and low-cost um, data extraction. But it also makes it easy for small startups, people with an idea. This flight caster tells you if your flight's going to be late. They predict this with a clever algorithm and freely, freely available weather and FAA data. It's a really cool and disturbing project that took CCTV coverage from uh, stores and used computer recognition to actually not see you know, the people, but um, the brands, the uh, things that are on the packets people are carrying, and deliver market data to uh, retailers. You don't have any privacy, I'm sorry. You know, everything you do now leaves an identifiable trail, whether you realize it or not. So the best thing is to kind of get over it and realize that what we need to do is turn some of this computing power to our advantage as well. This is a man who's walking funny. <laughs> your phone can now tell with its motion sensors in there, there's now a program you can get for your phone that will tell if it's in your pocket because you're, you've got a funny walk. So we can use computing and algorithms to our benefit. We can hold our governments to account by looking at the uh, the data uh, that we can get from them. And we can do the math ourselves. We can crunch large amounts of data to find out whether they're telling us the truth or not. So where is this going? I've been talking about large amounts of data and uh, computation. Where it's going is real time. Our ability to process information is getting faster and faster. And when we can do these kind of analytics and have this kind of intelligence that happens like that, it's probably scary, but that's what's happening. 
So we now remember this guy. He, William Smith, he, he, justice was done in the end to him. And his invention and what he did is sort of available for us now in history. We think that the people who we're going to remember, the people who we're going to remember in the next 10 years are those who are going to understand and be able to use their data properly. Uh, that's who I am. I'm doing a conference about this. Thanks for indulging me.